Welcome to lesson uh, 11.3 on page 259 where today we are now writing equations with either no solution, one solution, or infinitely many solutions. So yesterday we were determining how many solutions the equation had. Today we are actually writing them ourselves. So our try problem says that Mrs. Quinn writes this problem on the board. And we're going to complete it in two different ways. First is what number can you write on the line so that this equation doesn't have any solution? And what number can you write on the line so the equation has infinitely many solution? And remember, infinitely many solution is when the equation is, the answer is true. So, for example, 0 equals 0, um, 20 equals 20. If you end up with something like this where both sides are just the same number, that means it has, um, why is scribbled out? I don't have to scribble that out. Uh, that just means it has infinitely many solutions. You could put anything for X and it would work. Mm -hmm. So, let's see here. We've got a 3X and a 3X. Those are our variables. So, all we have to do is fill in this blank spot over here with something that does not equal positive 5. And it can be anything. So... Hmm, I'm going to put 3x plus 5 equals 3x plus 2. Could be anything. Anything as long as not 5. Um, and then if we want it to have infinitely many solutions, we still got our 3x plus 5. And then we've got our 3x plus... 5. Make it the same. It's got an infinite many solutions. If you want to get fancy, maybe you could put um, 2 plus 3. Yeah, let's get fancy. Okay, that's our fancy answer. Alright. Now what do they got going on over here for the model? It's so, what they've done is they've solved the equation, but they've left the blank a blank. You could just made another variable. Okay, so and it says, think about what number gives you a false statement. We had said 2. Think about what number gives you a true statement. 5, because 5 would equal, you know, 5. 5. 5 equals 5 is true, just so you know. And then the analyze it is the same basic thing, except it means, you know, do it in your head. So, okay, now how are we going to analyze it? On page 261, number 1. Look at the analyze it. What must be true about the constant terms on each side of the equation? Remember, the constant terms are the ones that are not with a variable. So the constant terms are this one and whatever would go there. Those are the constants because they are constantly the same thing. Um, look, Okay, starting over. What must be true about the constant terms on each side of the equation for it to have no solution? What must be true about the constants of each equation? Uh, if the equation has infinitely many solutions, and how do you know? How do you, don't forget that part, that's an important part. So I'm going to say, what must be true about the constant terms on each side of the equation if the equation has no solution? They shouldn't be equal. Or maybe they would have to make a false statement. Okay. What must be true about the constant terms on each side of the equation if the equation has infinitely many solutions? Well, remember, infinitely many means both sides are equal. So, how can we phrase that? How can we put word that in English? I guess just the opposite of what we said, right? The they, I'll just put they, should be equal. And how do you know, that's an important question, how do you know, I'll type that part, because why not, let's just make everything sloppy. Statements like 5 equals 2 uh, mean the equation has no solution. Statements like 5 equals 5 mean the equation 
has infinitely, can I spell infinitely? Infinitely many solutions. Nope, we can't spell solutions apparently. So, solutions. There we go. Okay, number two is a two-parter, 2A. Two is there more than one number you could write on the line so that the equation has no solution? Explain. Well, we said it just can't be equal to 5, right? There's an awful lot of numbers that aren't equal to 5, right? I hope so. So, let's see. Yes, you can put anything that's not equal to 5. And then I can guess what B is going to be. Can you guess what B is going to be? Is there any, is there more than one number you could write on the line so the equation has infinitely many solutions? And we need to explain that. No. It has to be 5 equals 5. <coughs> Although I guess you could put like, two, like we put, what do we put, 2 plus 3? That doesn't really count because that is 5. Okay, number 3. What constant term... And my constant term is the number that's not with a variable. It's on its own. It has a constant value. What constant term or x term could you write on the line so the equation has exactly one solution? Is there more than one possibility and how do you know? Hmm. Okay, well, we can put a lot of things, right? Let's go back. Let's, where does the equation? Let's bring the equation down here so we can mess with it. It was... 3x plus 5 equals 3x plus whatever. 3x plus 5 equals 3x plus whatever. So we can put whatever we want there as long as it gives our, our equation one solution. However, and it says a constant term or an x term. And I want you to notice, if there's 3x on both sides, then eliminating those would eliminate all the x's. So we need another x term. Let's put whatever we want. Let's put let's put another x. Just one more. So now it's 3x plus 5 equals 4x's. There's 4 there now because we decided. Because the, the question said we could. Okay. So I can now subtract 4x from both, or 3x from both sides. And I've got 5 equals x. Ta-da! One solution. So, now we have to explain it. We can't just put our example. It says, how do you know? Hmm, how are we going to explain that one? So, what we need is, remember this number? Reminder time, another reminder. Reminder number, 67,000. The number that's with the x. Oh, I need another color. The number that's with the x, with the variable, that's called the coefficient. So the coefficients need to be different. We need a different number of x's. You need the coefficients. Need the coefficients. Did I spell that? For the variable terms to be different. So you can put any x term in the blank, except for 0x. That'd be cheating. That'd be a weird thing to do. Don't put 0x. Because that's nothing. 0x is, is just putting nothing there. Okay. And then the reflect is for you to do. Think of all the things we talked about today, and did any of them help you better understand how to write one variable linear equations with either no solution, one solution, or infinitely many, infinitely many solutions? Go ahead and pause, come back to me, and we'll do three practice problems together. Okay, let's move on. What have they got us doing over here? Number five, high teacher writes the equation. Blah, 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 blah. High concludes the equation has infinitely many solutions. Is high correct? Okay, well, let's solve it. And I'm going to cheat once again and zoom all the way in to solve this equation. And let's see if I have actually enough room to do this. So, I'll try to write small 3x minus 4 equals 2 times x plus 3 plus x. 
And I'm going to split my equation down the middle, make sure I'm keeping it balanced. Okay, the first thing I always like to do is eliminate parentheses by distributing the constant that is outside of the parentheses. So I have not messed with this side of the equation. And I've got 2 times x is 2x. Two 2 times 3 is 6. And then I've still got this positive x over here. The next thing I would like to do is simplify the right side of the equation by combining the like terms. So now I'll rewrite it a little bit even simpler. 3x minus 4 equals 2x and an x, well that's 3x's now, plus 6. Okay, now I want to, well, I guess I'll subtract the 3x's from both sides. 3x minus 3x cancelled out, cancelled out, and what do we have left? We have negative 4 and we have positive 6. Are those equal to each other? Not even close. So what did Hi say? He said there was infinitely many solutions. Infinitely many means that they would be equal on both sides. No. And then, but we also have to explain. Don't forget the explain part. That's important. Um, the statement is not true, so there are no solutions. Okay, let's see what they've got us doing next. Number six, which numbers could you substitute for C, right here, so that the um, equation has no solution? Select all that apply. Well, let's try them out, shall we? Okay, I've got, well, I'm going to cheat. I'm going to use my... Do, 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 do. I will put the first one, that's zero. Okay, let's distribute these numbers here. So I've got 4x times 4, that's 16x. 4 times zero is nothing, so I don't even need to put that. I've got 2 times 8x, that's 16x. And then I've got 2 times 1, so that's going to be positive 2. And then I will subtract 16x from both sides. And I've got nothing equals 2. Does nothing equal 2? No. That one works. And it says, but it says select all the ply, which means we're going to do that again. Okay, we're going to substitute 1 fourth this time. All right, distributing. 4 times 4x, again, is 16x. And 4 times 1 fourth is 1. And then this again, let's just, that's 16x times 2, plus 2. We don't need to keep doing that every time. Okay, this one's going to end up being 1 equals 2. Is that true? Is 1 equal 2? Sure doesn't. Let's try the next one. Oh no, my C appeared again. Get out of here. We're done with you. Okay. Let's plug in the one half. Oh wait, I was going to leave this part. 16x plus 2. That's going to stay the same. I don't have to distribute that every single time, do I? Okay, so we've got, again with a 16x, equals 16x, and then, oh, plus 2. And then this one, the 4 times 1 half. Well, what's 1 half of 4? That's plus 2. These are equal. 16x plus 2, 16x plus 2. They are equal. So how many solutions does this equation have? All of them. All the things. So this one has infinitely many solutions. We don't want it. We want no solution. I guess I'll leave some of that behind. Okay, next one is 1. 
Shall we try it? It's good practice, right? Okay. So 4 times 1 is 4. So we still have our 16s, and that would leave us with 4 equals 2. Does 4 equal 2? No, it does not. Oops, what did I click? Okay, get rid of that one. Alright, last one we gotta do is 2. 4 times 2 equals 8. So this will leave us with 8 equals 2. Does 8 equal 2? You sick of me asking that question yet? You should be. Because I am. Okay. So it was all of them except for C. What do you know? Alright. Number 7. Write a constant term. So something with, you know, the uh, some just a number. Constant term is just a number by itself. Or a variable term, so something that has a coefficient and a variable stuck together. Uh, on the line, so each equation has the number of solutions shown. So this one we want to be a no solution. That means we want it to not be equal. These parts are already equal. Those are already equal. So we just need the constant term to not be equal. So we can put anything except for 1. Let's put... 4 because it's my favorite number. I love the number 4. It's just so even. That's a terrible heart. There we go. Okay. And uh, we want this one to have one solution, which means we want the m's. That means we don't want these m's to cancel out. We need the we need the the variables have a different coefficient, so we're going to need to put a new m there. We're, let's just put another m. That way we'd have what? m equals 1 is what it'd end up as. There you go. And then we want this one to have infinitely many solutions, which means they need to be completely equal on both sides. So these are, oh, I want my highlighter. The variable terms are already equal. We just need to make the constants equal. So what's e what constant is equal to 3? Oh yeah, that's 3. 3 is 3. And then same thing with this one. We want this one to have infinitely many solutions. So we need it to be exactly the same. Ooh, this one's trying to mess with you. Look at this. The variable terms are already equal. And we've got a positive 4 here, but it gave us a negative here. Hmm, but we need to make this a positive 4. So what can we put? Oh, I know. A negative 4. Negative, double negative is a positive. Then your parents yell at, yell, yelled at you when you say, I ain't got no homework. And they say, oh, that means you do have homework because you have a, you, that was a double negative. Or is that just my mom? Alright, so that was it for us today. Uh, you've got your green pages, and good luck.